Hello. We have lots of different Soviet rocket types in DCS. Which ones are the best for the job? What if I want to destroy armor or concrete or just make the biggest boom? While this guide is meant to help you match the best rocket for the occasion, no matter if you're flying a MIL, a MIG, or a Sukhoi, I will mostly be talking about the MiG-24 as it is really the only aircraft we have that has rocket loadout restrictions and CCIP errors. And this might heavily affect what is the best for the job when it comes to What's the best rocket to make my enemies explode into a million pieces? So, I will go rocket by rocket, explain the pros and cons and stats, and mention any restrictions for the Mi-24B. So, let's go in order of size, starting with S5. The pylon restrictions of these mean that to carry S5, you must carry either four of them at once, or carry them alternately with bombs on outer pylons, and CPG flipping the switch. This is because, fun fact, the UB in UB16 and 32 pods means universally block, meaning that uh, this pod is a universal block designed to attach and be used by any Soviet pylon for bombs to increase its compatibility. Therefore, it has the exact same pylon restrictions as bombs, which is not that good. But hey, hey, pr pretty smart to design your rocket pods to work on any bomb pylon, right? <laughs> S5M. ED added this rocket last year, and it is one of the oldest S5 variants in existence, and is basically just a general high explosive. Interestingly, this is the rocket that the Soviet Union Having used these 57mm rockets for air-to-air -air use, realized it was also pretty good for air-to-ground use. I mean, who could predict that air-launched unguided rockets could be better for air-to-ground than hitting other flying things? However, this has basically no benefits over the other S5 variants that we have. It's weaker in every destructive metric. Benefits it has Pretty red tip, <laughs> very light weight if you're on Weight Watchers, <laughs> and also your fastest S5 and basically your fastest rocket. Ironically, this is probably your best anti-aircraft rocket as you have the greatest number of them and the highest speed. On to S5KO. This is the original S5 rocket we had until 2024, brought the S5M and S5KP. This is solidly in between the two in terms of specifications in pretty much every way. I always find it very odd that so many Soviet rockets use shaped charges, as with their 8 to 30 mil accuracy, they would almost never hit a vehicle dead on, and they're only decreasing the amount of explosive in the rocket by doing this. S5KP. This was added in 2024 and is an interesting addition. This was the last S5 variant made in the Cold War. It was made after the S8 was already introduced, and thus to stay relevant, added a larger fragment sleeve, a larger shaped charge for more explosive, and a more sensitive and reliable fuse that makes absolutely no difference in DCS. Of all S5, it has the most explosive power, the best armor penetration, the best concrete destructiveness. However, despite its warhead upgrades, the motor is the same as the previous variants. So since it's so heavy, it is the slowest of all S5 rockets, and your second slowest rocket overall. This is my personal choice though when I take S5. In my opinion, the best looking rocket type on the Mi-24. Well, pretty much every other rocket type allows you to put more explosive per pylon on the Mi-24. Since rocket spread was increased in DCS last year, 
I'd kind of prefer the S5 to every other rocket, including the S8. Yeah, it's less powerful, but because I get 60% more rockets than with S8 for the same dispersion, the area my rockets affect is more evenly damaged, and I have a higher chance of my rocket hitting near my intended target, even if the blast damage is less. And it really frustrates me when I fire all my S8s and the impact around the target, leaving it undamaged. Now, S8. Since these use a more advanced firing circuitry where the computer can actually recognize it as S8, it has less weapon restrictions than the S5, but basically being the only rocket other than the S24 that allows you to carry 8x ATGM, R60, at the same time as this rocket. I will only go over the explosive types we have. Voke has a great video on the Illumination one, and I mean, who am I kidding? You're here to see what pack of Boom Boom Stinks is the best for the job not to play Thomas Edison. S8 Com is the classic 80s version, and the kind that you will see 99% of the time in reality, along with its earlier S8 KO version. And comparing a pod of S8 Com to S8 5, we have more than 50% more explosive, and a rocket that is generally faster. So if you want a realistic scenario, this is your best bet. If you want S8 without adding too much weight, this is your best bet. And one genius design I would like to point out, to improve upon the S5, they changed the fins to extend forwards rather than backwards. This way, the same tilt that allows the fins to spin the rocket after extending also tilts the fins when folded so that the rocket exhaust makes the rocket spin while in the pod. This means that compared to the S5, the rocket can spin up inside the pod, increasing accuracy, making absolutely no difference in DCS, but hey, I got to respect the engineering. S8 OFB2. This rocket is very new, only introduced less than 10 years ago by the Russian forces and does not seem to be widely exported yet. However, Many DCS mission designers have either not caught on or they don't care, so you can often still use it even in Cold War scenarios. Basically, this is the second heaviest rocket type that you can carry, and the heaviest that you can carry on all four pylons. So, when you take four of these, the weight is immense, so be careful and you are warned. It's only really weaker than S8 Com when it comes to armor penetration. However, I find it can still take care of older tanks if you manage a direct hit at close range. While its weight is the reason I want to mention this, this applies to all rockets. I recommend to try and use rockets before using your gun, especially the S8 OFB2 and I have three reasons for this. One, the spread of rockets makes them very imprecise, and thus, it's best you use all your rockets in one to four volleys to thin out the target area while you have the most targets or to suppress anti-aircraft fire. Two, the massive weight. Having that gone is a huge boost to maneuverability and performance. Three, your pylons can be damaged rather easily by ground fire. If your pylons are damaged, you won't be able to fire or jettison anything from that pylon. You can monitor this by flipping this switch up to see your main floor pylons lit up. And if any of these lights are off, it means that your pylon is damaged or otherwise has nothing on it. Now, on to the big boys. These rockets were added in Afghanistan to add firepower while the S-8 was being developed and spread around. Even S-25 was tested on the Mi-24 at least once. S-13 OF, a very cool looking weapon. However, I must say I almost never use it due to its pylon restrictions, meaning that 
you can only use the outer pylons for them and not carry anything on the inner pylon. While they are using S8 ballistics for the CCAP, I find it to be a near identical match and perfect for aiming regardless. S24. This rocket gets big pluses from the cool factor of its huge size. I mean, how many other helicopters can carry a 240 millimeter rocket? And also, it is basically the same pylon restrictions as S8, allowing you to carry it with bombs, 8x ATGM, and R60. It is also your slowest rocket, though I can't deny it makes it cool to watch it slowly fly off like little spaceship boosters and make it boom bigger than a Fab 250. I've noticed with the recently tuned Mi-24 CCAP for the S-24 rocket, it seems to consistently hit about halfway down the CCAP cross without any significant boresight error even. And because of recoil and the 0.16 second salvo spacing, I would aim around two thirds of the way down the bottom of the reticule like shown in this picture. The S25 variants are obviously ridiculously large rockets and very satisfying to use. You have the S25 OFM concrete penetrator version and the S25 O fragmentation version. When we look at the stats of the S25 O, it doesn't seem very impressive. These numbers I'm using here are purely from the LUA files with all the necessary coefficients applied. However, there seems to be a bonus likely applied in C++ that we can't see in LUA. A bonus that makes it very effective against soft targets likely to simulate its fragmentation effect. And in my testing, S13 has shown a similar fragmentation bonus that may be just as large a bonus. For my testing, S25O and S13OF are the best Soviet rockets in the game for soft targets and S24 isn't far behind. And S25 OFM, despite being larger than S24, is actually slightly worse than S24 when it comes to soft targets. For example, against infantry, I found the S24 to have a 90 meter kill radius against infantry. S25 OFM about a 70 meter kill radius against infantry and S25 O to have an over 140 meter kill radius. So that's basically it for rockets. To recap, here's what I essentially recommend depending on the scenario. Need 8 times ATGM? Take S8 or S24. S8 OFP2 if you want destruction and accuracy. S8 COM to compromise on weight while still having accuracy. And 2 times S24 to maximize absolute destruction. Need to destroy concrete? S24 is best if that's the biggest rocket you can take, but if you're a Sukhoi, the S25 OFM is going to be your best option for concrete. Need S5 either for accuracy by number, time period limits, or balance, saving weight, or pure unbridled sex appeal. S5 KP is your best bet. Want to use what is most accurate to real world use of the Mi24P? Use the S8 COM. Well, that's it. I hope this helps illuminate the different rocket properties in DCS and helps you make the most deadly choice for your enemies.